What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm the Vigorous Shooter and today I will be showing you guys how to frequency separate in video right here in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, first and foremost, a little disclaimer here. I want to let you guys know that doing this frequency separation is not going to be the same way you know it in Photoshop, basically. So Photoshop, you have to go through different layers and doing details and whatnot. Although we will be using some type of layering mechanism here, but it's not going to be as clone stamping friendly like you do in Photoshop. So first we want to look at our clip here. All right. This is going to be our hero shot. So basically this clip is a model putting on her, um, putting on her shoes and then turning around. All right, let's, let's find a hero clip. That's going to be that we're going to use. This one is pretty sharp. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a, a quick little color grade. All right. Using our first node, bringing this down a little, all right, real quick, very sloppy. But as long as we could get the point across, let's bring the midtones up a little bit and let's hit the contrast. I think I'm happy with this. Let's bring the midtones down a little bit. And then we're going to add some saturation just to kind of like see what we're working with. All right, boom. Now that we did this, cool. Now, um, if you look at my node structure, this is not the type of structure I would use for my node tree. What I just basically set this up right now so you guys can get an understanding of what's going on. Um, so first is the color grading. Then right here, the middle node is very important. That's going to be the sharpening tool. I'm going to explain in a little bit why we're going to use this, right? This is our skin node that we're going to make our skin adjustments and refinements on. So first, what we want to do is we want to qualify the skin. So let's gra grab our qualifier and qualify the skin. I had my highlights on already. If you guys don't know how to take it off or on, it's this little thing up here, right? Just click it and it'll show you what you're working with. Um, this is a pretty good, you know, a pretty good highlight already from the jump. Um, let's kind of like tighten it up a little bit. Yeah, this was a clinging key right here. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Let's clean the black. Let's clean the white um, and let's denoise a little bit. And what we're going to do is let's take the highlight off so we can see the overall picture. I like to first color correct my skin tone, right? I don't like the way her skin tone look. I'm just going to add a little bit more color into it. You see this? I could add as much color as I want into it. Um, let's reset it. I'm just going to add a little bit more red tones into her skin like here. So if you see before, after, before, after. All right, so now here's where the frequency separation technique comes in, all right? Now that we have highlighted the skin, we already understand that the skin lies into the midtones, right? So what we wanna do is on this same skin tone node, um, we're going to go to our color wheels, right? On the second tab of the color wheels right here, there's a portion of it that's called mid-tone details right here, this little spot right there. And what that does is it just takes, it just adds more details into the mid-tone area. But since we already, since we already highlighted our skin tone, which is in the mid-tone area, we're going to play around with those details there. And if you see, let me zoom to her face a little bit more. If we bring it to the negative side, we could kind of like see it softening the details on the skin. So just to show you a harsher example, let's bring it to a hundred, right? Negative a hundred. You could see it just like completely destroyed the details in the skin tone that we highlighted and the lips still keeps the details. The eyes still remain with the details. It's just the skin where we qualified that is soft. And what would happen if we brought it to the opposite side, it would add hella detail. Holy freaking crap. All right, let's bring it back to normal. And then we're going to basically dial it in to where we feel is comfortable and suitable for our eyes. 
So I like to keep mine around 20 to 40, right? Anywhere in between there. So, um, but it all depends on the clip that you're working with. So let's bring it. Um, I actually like it past 40, actually, in this clip. 48 looks pretty good to me. Okay, guys, we're halfway to finishing the frequency separating technique. If you guys found value in this video so far, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos. All right, let's go right back in. And I feel like I could go more because there's just so much detail on this camera. Picked up hella details. So I will keep it at 58. I like that. All right. So um, now if we do the before and after, we could see a big difference just in the overall skin, right? Um, now here's where the sharpen tool comes in handy, right? There's two ways you could do it. You could either put the sharpening on the skin node, but what I like to do is I like to put the sharpening on the node right under the skin node, if that makes sense. That's just how I do it and I refine things here and there about it. So you guys could do the same thing. So it's just getting the technique and utilizing it in ways that fits you guys the best. So what I like to do is I'll go to the sharpening um, node and I'll go to my sharpening um, parts and I'll just bring the radius down to like 48. Like I live and die by that number right here, 48, whenever I'm doing frequency separation on skin. But yeah, as you can see, now we could play everything back, right? If it stops rendering. I feel like I could dial back in a little bit from the mid-tone details. So I'm just gonna do that real quick, just to kind of like make it look a little bit more realistic. I think I think this looks pretty clean. Right, boom, there we have it guys. And that's how you frequency separate in DaVinci Resolve. You know, you wanna, you wanna make sure you do it with taste and not take it overboard because at the end of the day, you know, you still wanna have the person look clean and still keep their details to their face. Not everybody is accustomed to frequency separating in video. And I'm pretty sure there's gonna be stronger tools in the future that's gonna allow us to do it even better. As of right now, that's what we have to work with. Thank you guys for stopping by. Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed this video. And make sure to subscribe to this channel for more content like this because I will be coming out with a ton more bombers for you guys to learn and push your skills further. With that being said, I'll see you guys on my next one. Deuces.